Greetings, family. This is another edition on my channel podcast. It's Kyle Dixon here. Uh, I got my good friend here, Mike Walker, in the in the building, in the place to be. Say what's up, Mike. <laughs> How we doing, fam? Yes, see. Yes, indeed. So, look, today topic we're going to talk about are the recent uh, addition of stats to the uh, Major League Baseball Association based off the with the Negro League. So the Negro League, as we know, has been a league uh, started in, is it 1911, Mike? Is that around about the time? Uh, uh, yes, it is. Okay. You are, yeah, very, yeah. Yes. yes, sir. 1911, uh, about the incorporation of the stats. Now, again, this is a moment when we talk about in history, we talk about Black history, American history, and we want to talk about it because Mike, uh, for those who don't know, Mike, and his father uh, owned a shop in Nashville, Tennessee, that called the Negro League Shop. I visited it. You know, me and Mike are good friends. We grew up together. So I wanted us to talk about that uh, with you all today because the importance of when we talk about sports and how we recognize sports and how we use sports. You know, I got on my sports cap. Mike got on his from his illustrious, you know, HBCU, you know, history. You know, so these things have um, context in, in, rec in recognizing of who's acknowledged and who is not. And also in reference of how they're acknowledged, right? So the incorporation of these stats is a very interesting and important thing happening right now. So the truth, as they say, the truth is coming to light. So we'll really get a chance to see through stats how these players were, how, how phenomenal these players were and how they created their own league and their own movement, you know, on top of the talent of these exceptional black athletes. So Mike, uh, I want to go into like, just like you and your dad's connection to the Negro League in general, and then just some of the things that you all were able to uh, learn, but also able to like showcase when y'all, when you all had to shop down in Nashville. Um, well, Kyle, thank me for uh, bringing me on your platform. One, um, as we was, um, as I was overlooking everything that was going on uh, with the Negro Leagues, especially mm -hmm. uh, back in my day uh, with it, the Nashville connection on everything that's going on even now is so important on mm -hmm. um, education on people who want to know about the Negro Leagues mm -hmm. nowadays. Yes. So um, as I was coming up, everything I knew was Negro Leagues. Um, as you know about, um, uh, as we know about FUBU, mm -hmm. Tommy Hill figure, the mm -hmm. whole nine. Um, yes, the Negro Leagues had a big move when it came to that movement in, in a clothing line standpoint good point so um yes so my dad my uh uh myself i i think i played a good part in that too my brother yeah. also right exactly true true family affair indeed yes uh in uh moving the uh negro spirit um uh, alive also mm -hmm. so you know as we're coming up to uh juneteenth mm -hmm. My brother was asking me about that too, and uh, what we're gonna do with that. Also, mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, a lot of that st a lot of that stays very close with us, just because um, twenty years ago, this is what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. As I'm glad you mentioned Juneteenth because when we talk about the celebration of that, the acknowledgement of that, now it's an official holiday. But some people, you know, some people. Uh, and right and righteously so they're like well i recognize it before it became a holiday and now that's become a commercial commercialized holiday companies are going to uh use that as a vehicle to gain more consumers for their companies right they're going to again commercialize it and make it more about a money grab than anything what do you say about that as far as the negro league because again it was a legitimate league like with like i said exceptional foundational players you know pitchers catchers brothers coming from all over the nation um i think mainly in the south though correct south and midwest correct most i mean well 
we were all over the place. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, remember uh, Martin um, with the uh, Pittsburgh Crawfords um, jersey on it's in the true. show, you know what I'm saying? So we was all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, St. Louis, down south. Mm -hmm. um, in my experience, um, yeah, I was able to uh, I was able to sit with uh, Larry Schmidt -O. when Michael Jordan was playing down in Birmingham uh, with the Barons when they were playing mm -hmm. against the Nashville Sounds. Mm -hmm. I was at those. I was at those games. Mm -hmm. I was at those games. Yeah, yes. the farm team for the Sox, which I got on right now. What he's talking yes, about? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Nashville yeah, I was, I, I was at those. I was at those games. Yeah, and um, this was '95 when. My man Peyton was playing against the Bulls, <laughs> and, he, and, and, and yeah, and Peyton lost. But but yeah, yo, bro, I was there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And in the midst of it, um, it's been a lot uh, for the Negro leagues that I've been a part of. Uh, my dad had a shop on Jefferson Street. Uh, his oh, shop yeah. on Jefferson Street, um, landing him a spot on Sports Illustrated. Wow. Yeah, he had a spot on Sports Illustrated and they called it, well, we can all Google it, but yeah, they called it uh, the Little Shop of Honors. Wow. Not wow. Honors. I, I, I can't believe I forgot that, man. I, I, I vaguely remember, right? I vaguely remember, but I can't believe I forgot that. I'm surprised we didn't get that issue. Just for all um, and it and it is an archive too, mm -hmm. because um with the Negro League, the Negro League came off like um came off like FUBU, mm -hmm. came off like a uh a, a, a fad, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And when we were on Jefferson Street, 1213 Jefferson Street, please yeah. remember that. Right. But um when we were down there. On 12, 13, um, I had all of the, uh, I mean, well, not that I had, my dad had all of the uh, Nashville Blacks um, coming down to see how the Negro Leagues uh, really came up. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, another thing that a lot of people don't understand uh, where the sounds play at now that's called the Sulfordale, right? Right. But when we came up, that was the Sulfordale. Yeah. And the Sulfordale is where the Negro Leagues came up at. Wow. Now, yeah, now the Nashville Sounds play there now. Yeah, it's just, yeah, wow. small world, Cal. Yeah, small wow. world, bro. See, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what we played at. Yeah, that's where the Nashville Stars played it. That's the name of the team that we had then. Wow. Yeah, dark. Uh, well, we had um, white jerseys, um, dark colors as when it came to the Stars. But yeah, okay. we were the Nashville Stars. Okay. Um, going back to it, um, my dad had his spot on Jefferson Street. Mm -hmm. And on Jefferson Street, yeah, I met all of them. Um, as far as uh Negro League players, mm -hmm. uh, Jim Zapp, Henry Kimbrough, mm -hmm. and I love them. They love me too, though. Yeah, yeah, I met a few. They, they used to, and they, and they and they used to uh mess with me a bunch too. I used to be a little chubby uh back in the day too. <laughs> And they used to uh, make sure that um, I was, um, yeah, a uh, uh, fit, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, Mr. Henry Kimbrough, and this is old Nashville um, talk also. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody remembers Bill's cab, okay. that was Mr. Henry Kimbrough. Okay. He had took that over. Uh-huh. Yeah. And and uh, if anybody remembers Bill, I mean, if you are old, I mean, well, of our age, excuse me, mm -hmm. 
yeah, you remember Bill's Cab. And uh in Bill's Cab, yeah, he definitely um ran that. Um Clinton Bush McCord, Jim Zapp, uh Sidney Brunt. Mm. Yeah, I consider them my uncles. Wow. Yeah. I consider my uncles and um and boy they used to roast me on that <laughs> daily. Wow. Especially uh Mr. McCord. Yeah, he used to roast me, yeah. <laughs> <Very much. laughs> I'm sure it was like a hate, like a little bit of a haze and kind of like, you know, we gotta mess with you, you know, we the we the elders, you know, we gotta mess with you a little bit. You know? Oh, of course, of yeah. course, of course. Yes, yes, and I, yeah, I appreciate that too. Yeah, you know, my dad. I mean, um, you know, my family came up deep down south, also. <laughs> yes. So you know that Arkansas, um, you know, cotton picking. Yeah. So yeah, we came up through a lot of that stuff. So you know, saying with that, yeah, my parents didn't think that, uh, yeah. That we wasn't with it, but right, right. <laughs> you know, our you know our education, you know, what I'm saying uh, pulled through for indeed. us. Indeed, indeed, man. So I want to go. I want to go into uh, the stats, and I'm and I'm and family. I'm reading from the uh, Major League Baseball website <clears throat> in regard to the Negro League statistics being revived and incorporated into the Major League Baseball stats. And I'm quoting. Uh, it says. Uh, on December 16, 2020, Commissioner Rob Manfred said, all of us who love baseball have long known that Negro Leagues produce many of our game's best players, innovations, and triumphs against the backdrop of injustice, end quote. Says, now a team of st statisticians and historians proudly announced the first appearance of Negro League players of the period 1920, so that's correction, maybe 1920, I think I said 1911 earlier, 1920, 1948, within Major League Baseball official historical Record says because the black players who entered MLB after 1947 performed at a superior level, it is reasonable to suppose that in prior years many had played at that level too. By recognizing the status of their leagues, we have added more than 2,300 2, players to the permanent MLB database. In writing a historic wrong, we have restored a Hall of Fame legends like Josh Gibson, Oscar Charleston, and more to their rightful place among all time record holders. All right. So my brother Mike, what are your thoughts on that, man? Because some people see it as a, a definite plus. Some people see it as, again, maybe them trying to appropriate or, you know, as people, they say, I cap and you, they don't cap, you know, just like, oh, okay, they're doing it just because, you know, they're trying to probably get more money or something like that. So, but what 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 is your take on that? Is it a good thing, bad thing? Um. So, you know, I've... Um... With me and my dad's experience through yes. all of this. Yes. Through all of this. Um, Willie Mays is called my home. Wow. Um, oh, 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 Willie Mays. Yeah. Say hey, Willie Mays. Call yes, sir. <laughs> okay. I just want I just want family to recognize my that. dad, my dad was deep in the game, bro. Yeah. Okay. And 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 it's no yeah, there's no cap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no yeah. lie to it. Um, Bob Costas has called my home wow. before. You know, and um, my dad has housed uh, a lot of uh, Negro League players as he was trying to uh, get his thing going on. Also, yeah. wow. Um. So in your question. I'm I'm on a yes and no mm. with that. Yeah, I'm all, I'm on a uh, yes and no. Mm -hmm. Um, I know uh, Buck O'Neill, mm. and I love his smile too. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, I understand the need to get the Negro leagues uh, involved in major league stats. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I'm from the cloth of only the ball was white, right? You know, yeah, so yeah, as we involve ourselves with uh major league baseball, I understand that it is a good thing 
But um, I do have a concern on making it a marketing agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, you and I know this, and I'm sure the family may know this, but they have the Negro League Museum down in, uh, well, over or down in, Can I'm in New York, so, you know, but down in Kansas City. Um, yes. So, um, now, I'm not sure how long it's been there, but I know it's been there for, you know, for a decent amount of time. I haven't been yet. Quite a time. Yeah. Yes. Have, have you been there yet? Um, uh, my dad has been there. I haven't been there. Okay. No, I have. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah, it's on. It's on my list. I don't like to say bucket list. It's just on my list. <laughs> understood. Understood. But uh, what yeah. I would uh challenge a lot of people to um look at is how much Black history Nashville, Tennessee has especially with the Negro Leagues also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go into Negro it. Leagues. Um, and I'll even, I, and this, this is just a bone I'm going to throw you. Yeah. Um, the uh, cowboy movie, uh, Nate Love. Yes. Yeah, he had a Nashville, Tennessee, bro. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. It's the, and yes. this is Nat Love, aka Deadwood Dick, right? This is what we're talking about, right? That's correct, bro. Okay. Yeah, yes. I know, I know a little something. Family. Yeah, you don't, I didn't say you didn't, bro. Yeah, 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 I'm no, just no, saying. No. I said, yeah, I said the majority. I said the majority. I ain't saying my dog. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, no, but I, but I said that you know because the family, you know, this is when we talk about those movies coming out. I think you mentioned it when we talked uh, a, a minute ago. Uh, the harder they fall. Right, when we talk about yes, blacks, yes, blacks yes, in the West, yes. you know, uh, was it a uh, yes, Texas? yes, Nate Love is out of Nashville, Tennessee, bro. Yeah, yeah, he ended up in Texas, I want to say, but mm -hmm. yes, he was out of Nashville, Tennessee, yes, sir, yes, sir, man. One of them, yeah, the first, yeah, the first SEC black player is out of Nashville, Tennessee, bro. <sighs> yeah, we have, yeah, our, our, we're so historical and. A lot of times we deny that so bad it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And that's, what that's why I got my AM hat on. I don't really <laughs> represent Alabama, but I do know I went to, you know what I'm saying, Huntfield, you know what I'm saying, get my studies in. Yeah, that <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Gotta represent. I ain't even mad at that, too. Man, I ain't mad at that. You know, I stay, you know, I stay here. Well, stayed in Nashville for Fisk, you know, you know, so I stay, I stay hometown. But uh, yeah, man, like that's, that's the history. And just to throw you, you know, a curveball a little bit. Um, what about the players now, man? Like, what, how do you feel about the players now with the lack of black players in the major league baseball? Uh, because we know that, you know, basketball is, uh, 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 became, one of the focal points for putting our children in or for us engagement in as far as sports. And of course, football is next. And baseball is always, you know, Nashville is not necessarily a baseball town. It can be. It's more football. We know that, right? Uh, and I would actually say, again, family, you know, don't, don't, don't uh, hate on me for this. I would actually say that Nashville is probably football first, baseball second, and basketball third. When we were coming up, when we were coming up, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on that. No, I mean, well, I would I would like to present this to you. Yeah. Um in the NBA mm -hmm. or in the NBA. Yes. And you know me and you keep up with basketball. Right. And we ain't spoke about this yet, yet either. <laughs> right. But you know this is what we do. Uh-huh. Um Are the Europeans uh, bettering our brethren now? Mm. I got another question for you. Mm. In MLB, are I? If anybody, if anybody is mad at me about my statement on this, please. I apologize. Okay. But are the outskirts uh better than our MLB players? Mm. Than our NBA players? Mm. That's a legitimate question. 
I'm not. I'm, I, I am not. I am not no hater at all. Yeah. But I. I and this is respect to them. Yeah. They coming. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, that's real. That's a that's a legitimate question. Two questions you asked, actually. You know. Because yeah. I, I want to. I want to say it twofold. Yeah, because they coming. Yeah. Yeah, and they hungry and they yeah, disciplined and yeah, man. And um, this is in that I'm and then we were talking about Negro League, but I'm going to AAU. But I'm like, bro, like y'all, yeah, like um, y'all throwing the game off. Like, uh, yeah, the folks out of uh, uh, out of Euro, they're not coming in with that with that mindset. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're not doing what you guys are doing. Yeah. Yeah, they're coming for y'all, mm -hmm. and it's and it's weird to me too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, and and see, this is legitimate because the you know when we were coming up as as youth, that wasn't really the conversation. You know, the conversation was more just like, can we get established in the league and really get our foothold as far as like making accomplishment and continuing the legacy of the players, whether it be. Uh, NBA or whether it be like Major League Baseball, you know. Oh, I cannot, I can't, I'd be, I'd be remiss not to mention this. I don't have the hat on. I got the Sox hat on, so I represent. But Mookie Betts, man. Shout out to Mookie Betts, man. From the from the oh, yeah, well, you know hey, we love the city, bro. Yeah, we from the, the city, city man. Bro. You know, if he ever sees this Mookie, man, we rooting for you, bro. I, I love how you carry. Yeah, we love the city, bro. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Mook, 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 no, bro. Yeah, yeah Mook, no, bro. Yeah. Have y'all ever had a conversation? Have you ever hollered at him or been able to have been uh, uh, connected with him? He ain't pulled up on me. I ain't pulled up on him. But mm -hmm. uh, that's just a uh, uh, we wait. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, I was going to say too, Cal, yeah. I, mean, I ain't trying to um, overdo nothing. Mm -hmm. but my pops did have a um, spot in Sports Illustrated by 1995. He had a spot in uh, Sports Illustrated okay. uh, called Little Shop of Honors, since we're talking about Yes, uh, the gotta go back to that. Yes, for sure. And um, in, in that uh, article, you know, we, you know, this Sports Illustrated, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So in, in that article, um, I used to call them my uncles mm -hmm. back in the day, back then, yeah. because they used to roast. They used to, I used to be a little <laughs> chubby or something. I used to be a little chubby or something, and they used to roast me every second of the day, bro. And uh, and with that, I used to accept it, you know, yeah, because I yeah, I, I loved. That's what it was, used to though. Back then. Every day, yeah, they used to, you know, what I'm saying, come holler my dad. They playing chess. Yeah, it's this day I love to play chess. Word, and yeah, uh, Henry Kimbrough, uh, Clinton Bush McCord, mm. Jim Zapp, they used to all come up. Um, my dad knew Jefferson Street Joe too. Mm -hmm. he, he used to walk up. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, shout out to Jefferson Street Joe. Come Gibson. in, pull up. One of the first. Uh, back I, yeah, back the we got an autograph card by him too. Yeah, Jefferson. Yes, Jones. and these are and these are um major people in Nashville, Tennessee. And I always uh take my pride with that, mm -hmm. bro. And some of the best things I seen was um uh, being able to work at uh 1213 Jefferson Street mm -hmm. and meet those black men. Yeah. That was some of the best things I've ever been able to do, bro. Word. Word, man. Ooh, that's what I'm saying, the history family, you know. And I, and that's why I want to have Mike on because, you know, him and his dad and really his whole family, his brothers too, his younger brother as well, you know, they participated in the Negro League shop on Jefferson Street in Nashville, Tennessee. And, uh, you Blood, know, sweat, and tears, bro. Yeah, man. And it was great because, you know, we bought stuff, you know, we bought stuff and I was rocking it proudly, you know what I'm saying, with the big Negro League thing on the back, Pittsburgh Crawford shirt. I remember I had, that was one of my favorite shirts. 
You know what I'm saying? And I, I was going. To, I was going. I was, I was even thinking about this uh, last night. I was thinking about uh, how we was going to approach this. Yeah. But uh, yeah, even back when um uh, uh Martin was doing his show, yeah, with yeah, the, uh, yeah Pittsburgh yeah. Crawfords uh, uh jersey, bro. Like um, yeah. The Negro Leagues had a movement like Fubu, bro. It did. It did. Like Carl Canine. It sure did. You know what I'm saying? Like it, yeah, it had a whole movement. And we, I guess, is kind of coming back into that now, which is cool. It is real cool. But yeah, we had a whole move yeah. previously. Yeah, real talk. And and I was gonna ask you about that as well. <clears throat> uh, before we end, we're gonna you know end it soon. But that's important because you know we were looking for fashion designers back then. That's when the black fashion, urban quote unquote, urban fashion designers were coming up, like the Fubu, the Mecca, uh, the Fat Farm. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, you know, all those, like you said, African American college alliance. Even those, those that wasn't black owned at the time, which we found out later. But it was in that it, it was in the, that 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 pantheon of fashion brands that were catering to young black men and women. You know, at the time, like say, like Mike said, you talking about 90, 94, with ninety three, ninety four, ninety five. You talking about those times? Yeah, it was back. It was back then, bro. Sure was. Let me ask you this. In regard to the, the the gear and also the players, right? Did they receive any compensation or did they get any, I guess, like a promotion through the club? Okay. Not just, I mean, your, your shop in itself was promotion. But I'm talking about the actual people who made the clothes for y'all to sell. No, 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 no. It wasn't um, like the casual deals that you uh, hear about or see about today. Yeah, uh, that's that. Yeah, that yeah, that's not the case. Okay. And then, um, like I said, um, um, so um, a lot of these guys they had to stray away outside of baseball to make their money. Mm -hmm. Honestly, mm -hmm. like Henry Kimbrough. Uh, who I mentioned, and you guys can look him up too. He's he, you can Google him, fam. You can Google all these people I mentioned. Mm -hmm. But um, Henry Kimbrough, he took over Bill's cab, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how he continued his legs. And if anybody from Nashville knows about Bill's cab, they know. You know what I'm saying? If you if you know, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. If you know, you know. Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, my uh, my man, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Jim Zap. You can Google all these names I'm mentioning straight out. You can Wikipedia them also. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, my man Jim Zap. Uh, he threw the best party I've been to in Nashville ever, bro. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. And I was a youngster too. I was about uh, yeah, about sixteen years old. Yeah. And, Wow, that's part I've ever been to. Wow, yeah. epic like that. Wow, okay. Yes. Um, uh, Clinton Bush McCord, mm -hmm. uh, who I know, he used to ride me all the time. Uh, I used to be a little overweight back in the day. Yeah. Let me know about it, bro. <laughs> well, okay. Wow, man. So, last, so one of the last questions I want to ask you, Mike, is what do you think the significance of you know, the Negro Leagues now being incorporated into the stats, like overall, what do you think the significance will be for the, like the future generations? Like, well, now presently and like the future generations going forward, because again, the leagues have been separate and we already knew, we already knew that the black players had more, uh, a lot of them had more exceptional talents than the white counterparts. And that's no diss, that's no shade. That's just what it is. Yeah. Because of the, because of the dynamics we had to go through to even play and to create the whole league. Rube Foster, shout out to, you know, his, his legacy, Rube Foster, who created the Negro Leagues. What do you think the significance is like for this future, like for now and the future generation going forward? We we always want to be incorporated, right, mm -hmm. Katie? Like we we want to be a part of uh, what has always happened, right? Right. And um, when you look at when you look at the game and um, the experience of the game and um how we can bring more competition to the game mm -hmm. why would you not accept that mm -hmm. 
what's the, what would be the issue with accepting that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're yeah we're running home from third base. Why would you not accept that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's the only thing we're bringing to the game. Um, our satchel pages, Jackies, yeah, man, Larry Dobies, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, that's the only thing we're bringing to the Ooh, game. Just, 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 you know what I'm saying? Oof. Yeah, just, just, just more, just more to the game. Yeah, and no one would have a reason to deny that in 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 my mind. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, I, I understand how things go, but I I don't see how anybody would have an issue with bringing more exposure to baseball than that. Uh, as I was saying, uh, in Nashville itself, um, uh, where our sounds play at now, that's our old Sulfordale. Yeah. That's our old Negro League stadium where we're at now in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Now that's been taken over. Mm-hmm. To uh, be the sound stadium, which is fine, but yeah, our uh, Wesley Doc Dennis's, our uh, uh, Sydney Bunches, mm-hmm. these are the guys who uh, brought that land up for it possible to be respectable for the sounds to play that. Word. Okay. Wow, man. So, family. Um, you know, my guy here, Mike, you know, again, you know, regular brother, but good brother, entrepreneur, historian <laughs> on the Negro League. I wanted to bring him on and give some perspective because this is somebody I know I grew up with. And, you know, he's you my- got me up real early, too, bro. Yeah, <laughs> got you got to. Hey, man, top of the morning, as they say, top of the morning. So, you know, so this is something that I want to discuss because, again, it, 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 it was news for a hot minute and then it kind of moved on. But we know that behind these stats are these these are men's lives. These are their legacies that we're talking about. And to be able to be recognized in the quote in the MLB, you know, is something that to be honored and to be uh, discussed because for so long these men, you know, played to have that mutual respect. And now through this act from the MLB, which is I'm sure is 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 uh, to give actual credit to these brothers but you know mlb is a business too so i get that as well but hey it's a market it's, it's a marketing plot but we're yeah. okay with that because it still right. gives of uh, us our exposure so we're cool with that we're right. cool exactly exactly because that's the world we live in and that's how things are typically done when you talk yeah, about we're cool with that. exactly we will we'll, we're we'll cool take with that. that we'll take that because the stats stand for themselves the stats stands for themselves. Oh, and then and then they have to intrigue them into uh, into the MLB, which is even greater. Yes, sir. Uh, when we speak of uh Satchel Page and Josh Gibson, now we got to intrigue them into the MLB. That this is great, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about it. Uh, we may talk about it on on another another time. But you know, they incorporated the Negro Leagues into the video game. Into the oh, industry. bro! Now you know I know about. It. I didn't want to bring it up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, you know, like you know what? Let's go there for a minute, fam. Let's go there for a minute because you know we're gamers. You know the new we're gamers. I'm not much of a gamer as I used to, but but the but you know like you know your son and you know their peer group and the children is coming up now. You know a heavy game. Yeah. So. So yeah, they, they totally uh, integrated uh, the Negro leagues into. Um, so the game is MLB the show. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be quite honest with you. The show has been a top game for me for like the last five years. Mm. As far as the uh, graphics, uh, gameplay, the whole nine. Yeah. And now you're integrating the Negro Leagues into the show. Okay. Like it's super, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, that's 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 super, uh, great for me. Yeah, and you know, Kyle, you know, I I got a history in this. You know, mm-hmm. you know, my history is about uh, my education with this. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't really have conversations about 
situations like this outside of you and like four other people <laughs> being honest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Being honest with it. Yeah. And uh in saying that, yeah, and being honest with that, yes, this is the greatest, this is one of the greatest things ever. I got family members I can't have these conversations with. Mm. Mm. And that's how is that how deep it is, or it's just like it's a touchy subject or Oh no, it's just how deep it is, uh, uh how uh deeply rooted you are yeah. in uh this conversation. Okay. Um you know, we love Prince. Prince probably don't know this much about it. Yeah. We love him. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And when and when I talk about this is be fact, my we're not talking about Prince, the musical artist, we're talking about our friend Prince. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope that I hope that's what we were talking about. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, man. Shout out to Prince, man. Um, so yeah, so yeah, family. You know, we want to talk about this today because you know it's important. It's important to have these conversations, like Mike said. You know, certain conversations we can't have around certain friends and family members because it's just it's not that deep for them, or they're just not really interested, and that's okay. But as far as us being sports fans and also being uh, historians of Black history, whether it be personal or whether it be national or global Black history, African history, diaspora, you know, we want to be able to like talk about these things because, and, and in itself, Nashville, Nashville is on the map. It's a hot, quote unquote, hot city, but we've been on that, you know, and there's a lot of history there that's going to, that's, that might get lost in the sauce, as I like to say, if we don't really take the time to really acknowledge those aspects of like the Negro League and the civil rights movement and, and, and many other things and people that have uh, birthed uh, change in America through Nashville and in Nashville as a city. So it's so when, much black history uh, here, yeah. uh, K Dot. It's so much black history down here, bro. It's yeah. it's, it's ridiculous, bro. It and then um, for people like I got a I got my A and M hat on, and I'm a Tennessee dude, all true and true. Yeah. Only reason why I ain't go to Tennessee State because I knew too many people at <laughs> yeah. TSU, and I knew I had to go on, get out the state a little if I was gonna get educated. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. So that's I had to go ahead and slide, but hey, no, you know what I'm saying. You, you know, I got. You, Bro, you know me, yeah, yeah, I'm um Jefferson Street, true and true, bro. Indeed. True and true. Me and uh Lakota. Exactly. Exactly. And 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 I, I don't question that at all. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, shout out to my to my hometown. You know, Mike, I appreciate you, bro, coming on and discussing this, man, because again, I want to give it some more light and more shine than it than it has been getting. Because it needs to, it's long overdue, and it's just really the beginning, man. It's really just the beginning of people really delving deep into these players and their contributions to the game of baseball. You know what I'm saying? We were excluded. Like I said, when the ball was white, like Mike mentioned earlier, the books, I'm probably going to put some references uh, down below. Uh, but definitely, Only like, the ball was white, bro. Yeah, man. Great book. You know what I'm saying? Do your, do your research. Do the knowledge, as they say up here in, in the East. Do, do the knowledge. Do the knowledge. So... You know, I, I appreciate you, bro, coming on early in the morning. <laughs> you know, much appreciated, bro. Uh, and I will say, I will say, too, uh, I'm about to get me and uh, my son uh, that Nashville Stars jersey, too. So if y'all go on Ebbets Field, uh, please look up Nashville Stars jerseys, y'all. Word, word. Let's go and rock them out. Indeed. Let's do that. Let's do that. I'm going to have to look up for mine, too. So, uh, much love, family. Like, share, subscribe. You know to this channel, my channel. Uh, if you have any comments on Negro League or anything sports, put it down below. Put it down in the chat. You know we appreciate your time and effort. And on that note, me and Mike gonna peace out. All right, peace and love, y'all. Y'all hold it down. Hold love it down. <laughs>